Hello everyone, I am Aydoğan Vatandaş, the Editor-in-Chief of Politico.com. Today I am joined by Professor David Phillips. Uh, he is the Director of Program Building and Rights Institute for Study of Human Rights at Columbia University. Uh, David, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, David, I know that you have been uh, following uh, Turkey for a long time and you have uh, wrote books on Turkey and related topics. And I want to ask you how you see the relations between the United States and Turkey, especially uh, during the last several years. Do you think that there has been some deterioration between these two countries? There's been dramatic deterioration. Relations are at a low point for a number of reasons. Uh, Turkey's cracked down domestically on human rights, uh, actions it's taken against the HDP, Turkey's aggression against frontline states, its active collaboration with jihadi mercenaries in Syria, uh, in Libya, and also in Nagorno-Karabakh. And first and foremost, Turkey's decision to purchase S-400 missiles uh, from Russia, with a long list of grievances that the U.S. has. Uh, Those issues define the bilateral relationship, and I'm sure they were discussed during the meeting between President Biden and Tayyip Erdogan on June 14th at the NATO summit. Mm -hmm. And do you, are you hopeful after this summit? Do you have any insights? Uh, I'm not hopeful, but I'm pleased that uh, Biden held the line. I'm sure that uh, Erdogan pleaded with him to lift sanctions that have been imposed under the countering American adversaries through Sanctions Act. I'm sure that he implored Biden to uh, terminate U.S. support for uh, forces in northern Syria who are allies with the U.S. in the fight against violent extremism. I'm sure, too, that the U.S. Uh, raised concerns about domestic human rights and cultural and political rights of the Kurds. Uh, despite uh, his tough talk prior to the meeting and Turkish media suggesting that Erdogan was going to play hardball with Biden, there's nothing to suggest that Erdogan did anything but show up, kiss the ring, as we've seen in photos, uh, and respond rather meekly uh, to the deteriorating relations with the U.S., So now we need to take a breath, think about the way forward, see how we can repair relations, but those relations can only be repaired if Turkey becomes a partner in preserving the international order rather than a disruptor of uh, international relations. So uh, as far as uh, we saw, uh, Turkey wants to take some, uh, some duties in Afghanistan. So do you think that that move would uh, affect the United States decisions uh, on Turkey? Do you think that it would be a positive uh, move? So as far as I understand, Turkey's offered to control and secure the Kabul airport. Uh, as U.S. and NATO forces withdraw, there's going to be a vacuum. Turkey's offered to fill the vacuum. Mm -hmm. uh, There hasn't yet been a determination as to Turkey's role in the future. And Afghans, uh, including the Taliban, have made it clear that they don't want Turkey to remain in country. So we'll have to see what happens with uh, Afghanistan in the future. Uh, Turkey's made an offer trying to make itself indispensable. Uh, we don't know what the response to that offer has been. I think it's probably still being considered uh, by headquarters in Brussels. Mm -hmm. David, are you following the news uh, about a uh, Turkish mobster who has very really deep ties uh, with the Turkish state's establishment? So he's revealing a lot of secrets about Erdogan, Erdogan's family, uh, and linking them to money laundering and drug trafficking. And I just noticed that President Biden uh, made a statement in uh, NATO su summit. He said that they're going to fight with the money laundering uh, related uh, issues in all over the world. 
So do you think that U United States is going to be also focusing on these kind of issues? And do you think that it would be uh, related to Turkey as well? Yes, I have been following the statements by Mr. Pekker, and it's extraordinary what he's revealed. I think he has many more revelations mm -hmm. and we'll continue to hear from him. From my perspective, one of the most important uh, statements he made had to do with Turkish support for uh, jihadist mercenaries in Rojava. Right. Um, particularly uh, beginning in 2015 and continuing to the present. It seems that Turkey subcontracted with Mr. Peker's consultancy to transfer weapons uh, and militants to the front lines. This is nothing new. You know, we've seen this reporting right. before, but we haven't heard it from somebody who was directly involved mm -hmm. and who colluded actively with Akan Fidan and Tayyip Erdogan to make it happen. Yes, the Biden administration is deeply concerned about corruption, about money laundering. Uh, we're seeing that emerge as a cornerstone of Biden's international relations, and no country will be immune uh, from action by the U.S. if they're involved in criminality, personal enrichment, or other forms of corruption. So uh, there's a warning to everyone that they need to clean up their act, stop their dirty business, get back into the international system, and become a reliable and transparent partner of the U.S. and the West. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you think that there is a similarity between uh, Mr. Sedat Peker and Mr. Zarab? You remember Zarab was involved in evading sanctions against the United States. Do you think that the U.S. government would be interested in uh, Sedat Peker uh, having him in the United States as a witness? There is a similarity. What we're learning is that there's a network of henchmen that Erdogan has used to do his dirty business. Mm -hmm. Dr. Pekar is one, there are many others. You know, all of that needs some, some daylight, it needs to be exposed. And yes, uh, U.S. courts will be interested. We know that the Southern District of New York had a special interests in Hulk Bank and corrupt activities in which it was involved. Uh, let's see what Sadat Peker has to say. And I'm sure that his testimony uh, to a U.S. judge would be welcome. Mm -hmm. And uh, my last question, uh, David, what do you think could happen about the S-400 missile system deal between Turkey and Russia? Do you think that Erdogan would want to step back uh, whether he wants to step back or not, he hasn't given any indication that right. he's going to reverse the decision. And there's a big price for Turkey to pay. It's been excluded from the F-35 stealth fighter system. Uh, Turkey says that they only turned to Russia for the S-400s because the U.S. made transfer of Patriot missiles difficult during the Obama administration. I don't buy that argument. It's an effort by Erdogan to leverage Russia against the United States, uh, to put Turkey in the middle, uh, to demonstrate Turkey's indispensable role to both countries. Fact of the matter is that Turkey has spent nearly $3 billion on an S-400 system. Turkey's economy is in ruins. It shouldn't be spending that money on sophisticated weapons. It should be spending that money to stabilize the Turkish lira and on social welfare. So Congress has made it very clear through CATSA that there are going to be sanctions and a penalty for Turkey to pay for its nefarious activity. That's not going to change. If anything, the pressure is going to be intensified as Turkey moves forward with the purchase of a second battery of S-400 missiles, which is widely reported. Uh, David, thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. And we had uh, Professor David Phillips, the director of the program Building and Rights Institute for Study of Human Rights at Columbia University. Thank you so much again. If I could just add a point. Sure, sir. The meeting in Brussels uh, and the NATO conference overall was really about Russia and China. Mm -hmm. Meeting with uh, Erdogan on the margins of the NATO summit 
uh, was a result of um, Biden's statement on April 24th, author, uh, recognizing the Armenian genocide. Absolutely. Uh, if the focus of the meeting in Brussels uh, was to bring the alliance on board with a Russia and China policy, it was very successful. Uh, Erdogan may have tried to beat back the U.S. on some of its commitments that he believes uh, are not in Turkey's interest, but there's no reporting or suggestion that Erdogan was successful in that regard. If anything, he looked weak uh, and not very competent. You know, compliments to President Biden for holding the line and making clear to Tayyip Erdogan what's expected of Turkey. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.